uh, Aspera FC Brasilia, Brazil, against yes. uh, Irvin uh, Piruina. Eddie Vaughn. Yeah, Eddie This Vaughan. was like your hometown. Yes, this was in Brasilia in 2016. Okay, so – and Go ahead. Yeah, no, no, I was uh, – man, I, you know, and, and – you had you had said that oh we're going to touch on some and you can name some names okay we'll name some names this guy named Marcelo Brigadero Brigadero right so this guy all right I've known him for years okay known him for years I, I actually stayed at him and his mom's house in Rio when I was there doing camps for for the Anderson fight when I was there for Brazilian Nationals in Luta Libre when I was there for the for the uh, hell I stayed at his house. Um, uh, for uh, for 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 the Rio State Cup in uh, 2000, I think also. But so I've known Brigadero. I've known him from back in the day. And he calls me up and he offered me a fight. And I was going to fight this guy named Guilherme Carcassinha or something like that. But he was he was he was you know he's he's like coming up you know probably like 15 16 and two or something you know he's a prospect in brazil at the time so i was gonna all right i'm gonna fight him well c- comes up on the week of the fight you know about six days out oh carcassinha can't make it to brasilia you're gonna fight this guy like oh okay well i'd heard of this eddie von in town but everybody's like oh yeah he's just you know he's not that he's not that he's not ready for you carlo and all this and that. And it, in, in the back of my mind, I'm like, well, you know, change the matchup. Should I take the fight? There's a lot riding on it. I, you know, at that point, I was already coming off a couple, I think if you look at my record, maybe a couple of decision losses. So I, I had to be smart with the fights I was going to take. I had specifically trained for this guy. I think his name was Guilherme Carcassinha or something like that for like two months for Brigad, or, you know, six weeks for Brigadero's Aspera. And then out of nowhere, they're like, no, you're fighting this guy from your hometown. I'm like, oh, okay, well, I don't want to fight nobody because it's not going to do anything for me. And at that point now, you know, four years ago, I finally f- figured out, like, oh, Carlo, you got a name. You're like a, a former UFC guy, ex-UFC guy for these other guys trying to fucking beat you to, you know what I mean? So yeah. – I had finally figured that out. I was like, Carlo, maybe you shouldn't take all these fights they're offering you because they're just looking at you like you're you're fucking ex UFC. So, but then yeah, the, the fighter board. deep down, yeah, well, the but board. the fighter deep down, the fighter deep down, and, let, and instead of just saying, okay, well, I'm not fighting Carcassinha, who who would have done something for me the way I looked at it, you know, he was getting promoted in Brasilia in in, in Brazil. Uh, I I should have said, nah, you know, we'll we'll do it in the next next one. I was like, oh, okay, I'll fight this guy. And basically, I show up on weigh-in day, and I'm a kilo over, a kilo and a half over. And that's my fault. I'm, you know, I'm a professional, and I've always made weight and everything or tried. But if I'm over, I'm over. And I'm, you know, I'm, there's nothing to hide. I'll say it, I'm over, you know, whatever. We're here, though. Are you want to do it or not? And his guys put on all these impossible shit. They're like, well, okay, you know, in in retrospect, I understand because his coach is has always had it out for me. Like he would have loved to have been me, right? He was he's a jujitsu black belt here locally who's like always like he never had the balls to do it, but I was always doing it, sort of deal. But you know, but he's a very successful gym owner, gym owner here in Brazil. He's got a bunch of students. So anyways, this guy was training with him at the time. And I, so part of me is like, you know what? I'll fight this guy. Let's do it. And, and I showed up and I, I wait over and I'm like, well, you guys want to do it or not? I still want to do it. You guys don't want to do it. And they're like, well, yeah, we'll do it. And so I leave and I'm already drinking water, drinking Gatorade. And I get a call from Brigadero. He's at the venue. He's like, well, they came back and they said, they're not going to do it unless – you start, you know, a point down or whatever in the oh. round, 10-9 round or whatever. And I'm like, what are you talking about, Brigadero? And at this point, Brigadero and I, we're still solid. I'm still drawing on my years prior, 20 years. You know, not, not 20, but almost 20 years I've known him. It's not that like, oh, come on. You know, that's, yeah, that's I'm like, come on, Brigadero. I'm, I'm not even two kilos over. I already let him know. It's my bad. I, 
I, I offered him money. You know, I was like, but a point? That's ridiculous. And he's like, well, it's either that or there's no fight. And at that point, I'm like, I've sold 50 plus tickets in town to the cops that I train. And, you know, I got people coming. I'm like, man, I'm going to do it. Fuck it. Okay, fine. 10 9, first round, whatever. Sure enough, goes the decision and l- l- lost that fight. And also tore my freaking SC- ACL uh, uh, in that fight as well. So I was just like, one of those fights, like, oh, man. And fucking. Marcelo Briga they didn't even pay me for that fight. Oh. He kept your cash? Oh yeah, piece of shit. That's why that's why I straight say it. You know, I say it. What's he gonna do? What, what are you gonna do, Marcelo? I mean, come on, bro. It was like it wasn't even a it was like two thousand hey ice. That's like nothing, especially now with the with the exchange rate is ridiculous, but it didn't it didn't break me. I'm not, you know, I'm not like crying over money. I never had did, did never will because that's did you, did you get that's a an insignificant of amount. To, but what I'm saying is, you know, there's, 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 and he's not the only promoter that has backtracked on, on stuff and, you know, or, or like ghosted you after, or, you know, there's, there's okay. freaking, right. this so, industry is full of stuff like that. Carl, Carl, you said a lot. So let's, let's kind of bring it in. <laughs> so there are certain benchmarks for 50 fight club members that you have to have. And if you don't have them, Miguel and I, we just don't honor that you're a 50 fight club member and we'll even throw you out. We'll throw you out of the 50 fight club. You have Word. to get ripped off by a promoter. That's super oh, important. To. You have to. Mm-hmm. So let's go through the list. Who has ripped you off as a, as a 50 fight club member that we now honor? <laughs> Man, you know, here's the thing. Ripped off is one thing. Okay. But not, not even like give it. Okay. So ripped off, honestly, the only promoter that's ever ripped me off was freaking Marcelo Brigadero, man. That's crazy. Ain't that some shit? Ain't that some shit? But you know, it's cool. Let me, let me Whatever, man. For, for the non Portuguese speaking people, and I, I only dabble a little bit. This is a man who is known in the business as Marcelo Brigadero. Do you even know his real last name? Because Brigadero means street fighter. That's his, that's like his business. Yeah. But <laughs> that's not who he is. He was never frontline Luta Libre. I went at, you know, at, at state championships, I was winning Brazilian national championships. I was winning going to real Valley Tudo fights and representing Luta Livre back in the day. I did it. Where was he yeah. on the sideline talking, fucking politicking, getting oh train with me. I'll teach you the guillotine, Terry Adam. Oh, and this guy, and I'm going to, I'm England. I'm Darren Till's guy. Oh, and then off that, Signing other Brazilian guys, promising in the world, you know, including the guy that I freaking uh, fought there, Eddie Vaughn. Oh, we're cool, you know. He, we've got total respect. He's come to my yeah. house, my gym, and he's we've we've sparred after that fight. So we've we've he's helped yeah. me out. He we've moved around afterwards and everything. Nothing cool. personal, and right? He even signed with that guy Brigadeiro. So Brigadeiro's got like a whole bunch of guys that him and Stefano Sartori that. Uh, uh, take care of but dude so anti-ethical man you talk about like bro you're gonna stiff a brazilian a brazilian like a, a fellow brazilian like making nothing on that fight i gave you my name i wanted to fight because i'm stubborn and i i, I said i wanted to fight change the opponent fine i sold tickets i want to fight whoever you put in front of me i want to fight but i want to fight at least do your part yes it was a small freaking purse it was nothing compared to what i i deserve or what you know i should ask for but yeah but whatever it doesn't matter i don't fight just for the the money because otherwise i would have stopped years ago believe me but it's it, it, just do your part if you know if that's what the the, the agreed on was he agreed on do it but he's the only one that's ever really stiffed me the other yeah. ones i'll tell you what i'll go ahead and i'll name some names mick Maynard, 